So now I'd like to uh, introduce my friend and former colleague Malcolm Robinson, who used to be the laboratory manage manager at Worthing for many, many years. And during this time, he became the founder of Harvey's Gang. Um, in recognition of this, uh, Malcolm was made Biomedical Scientist of the Year in 2018, and he was the winner of the NHS 70 Thank You Award for Children's Healthcare, uh, and this was uh, filmed and featured on the BBC One show. Malcolm says he's now retired, but I think there's very little evidence of that, um, and he's kindly come to talk to us today about uh, Harvey's gang and the uh, children's pathology tours that in empower and educate our young patients. But it's more than that, isn't it, Malcolm? I think it also is extremely beneficial for the laboratory staff as well um, to yes. contextualise their work. So if I hand over to you, Malcolm, um, we're all looking forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you can all hear me and uh, hopefully see all my slides. As Howard says, I'm theoretically retired. Um, I'm a very proud ex-biomedical scientist and I still like to be involved with Harvey's Gang um, because I've seen the benefits of Harvey's Gang. Um, so I retired after 43 years in the health service uh, and I've seen many changes and most of those are for the better. However, what wasn't quite so good in the latter part of my career was patients. We started missing patients. We started losing our contact with patients, particularly in laboratories. Uh, when I first started, we actually were the phlebotomists as well as seeing patients on a regular basis and updating their treatments, etc. Uh, and over the years, because we deal with so many samples now, we've lost that um, ability. So who was Harvey? Well, Harvey, as a recap, uh, was a young six-year-old lad uh, that came down the South Downs in the snow on a toboggan once um, and didn't have the energy to get back up and go again. And his parents took him to the GPs, who took him to A&E, uh, and he was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. And he started his healthcare journey there. But as a six-year-old, he was incredibly inquisitive, asking why, where, how, when, what are you doing next? What are you doing now? Where do those go? Who does it? Where do the results come back? How do the results come back? Etc. So the laboratory team were contacted by the play specialist and the paediatric team to say that they've got a young lad with so many questions. Uh, can we do something about it? So we arranged for young Harvey to come down to our laboratory. And this is a picture of him and I that I still treasure. Um, and that was the smallest uh, white coat that we had. That was uh, Ruth O'Donnell's. And it came down to his ankles and we rubbed the sleeves up. We gave him a cardboard ID badge, filled his pocket full of pens, gave him a notebook and made a cardboard ID badge saying trainee biomedical scientist. And we sat in front of our blood grouping analyzer there for 33 minutes watching his group and save go around. He was grouping as A, B, R, H, D, POS, and therefore lots of reactions for him to look at and in question. And 33 minutes for a six year old to sit still was amazing. Uh, and he asked questions the whole time. And they thoroughly enjoyed his journey and felt empowered. Um, about what we did in the laboratory and yeah, you know, what we can do with our machines and our microscopes and what kind people give donations for us to pass on to patients like himself for regular transfusions of red cells and platelets. He had shared care at an early time with the Royal Marsden. That was our shared care site at the time. Um, this is Max, his 14 year old brother who was his bone marrow transplant donor and i think that's remarkable at 14 uh, being a donor um but nothing was too much trouble for his brother and he underwent uh, total body radiation chemotherapy and had the bone marrow transplant and we didn't see harvey then for quite some time thankfully um and then we started seeing samples and regretfully 
we know what that means when we start seeing the demise of a bone marrow transplant going wrong the results all go in the wrong direction and we regularly um, gave him transfusions but he also educated us in the laboratory and we changed our laboratory practice because at the time down in Worthing we only got one delivery from NHSBT a day so if he wanted platelets we wanted to know yesterday so he could have them today well that's not really good enough in the um, healthcare pathway of kids you know so he can't do anything sitting at home with his dad or his mum his brothers for a whole day whilst he's awaiting getting topped up with red cells and platelets uh, once he's had that then he goes home and he's a bit more life in him to be able to do things and so we changed our practice to you know whenever a platelets were required for patients we'd get them down ad hoc or as soon as possible depending on the, the urgency to make sure we changed our practice unfortunately harvey lost his battle and we worked with Derriford hospital down in plymouth and his final transfusion of platelets and red cells went out to a campsite caravan park in devon and there he uh, passed away surrounded by his family and that was the, his last transfusion and i was asked by the team in pediatrics whether i wanted to go to his farewell why i could never understand that question um i'd met harvey for an hour hour and a half maybe i took up platelets once to him in the pediatric unit just to see how he was doing but that's all i'd known of him i didn't know his life i didn't know his family very well why would i go to his farewell well as it turns out they put that picture of him and i up on the lcd screen and played somewhere over the rainbow by the cassidy which reduced me to complete bits um and they talked about his life and about what he learned and what he went through and i learned a lot that we did something quite remarkable and his parents thanked me for what we'd done and john rabs our consultant pediatrician said malcolm i've got another seven kids that could do with the same tour we agreed that he'd get better at his job and i'd get better at mine and we would do something about it and as biomedical scientists we reflect of what we do well and what we don't do so well and um, and to remember harvey what do we do well we came up with the idea that we would remember him by having harvey's gang what didn't go so well well our white coats were far too big we put hastily together a goodie bag which was an ibms congress bag with anything else we get get hold of so we needed to formalize that our id badge was first made of paper or cardboard so we wanted something better i mean harvey went away from the laboratory with his id badge in his white coat lording it over doctors and nurses throughout the hospital and used his cardboard id badge to get back into the pediatric ward we all know that that couldn't really happen in reality however it did because somebody on the inside pressed his, the button on the inside so we need that id badge to identify that person within the healthcare so what happened what what's it what's it why is it important there are patients we don't see them in laboratories do we we just see names or hospital numbers or dates of birth we don't know them as our patients but they are our patients they've got a family an extended family that worry themselves terribly about their illness there are patients and they're only maybe two foot six three foot tall and most of the time when we're talking to our patients we're talking to their parents and so we're not talking directly to the patient but to their mum or their dad or their carer or their grandparents and we aim our care at them hoping that they can put the words to the family and to the youngsters that actually understand but actually there are patients and they've got siblings and they've got their own ideas and thoughts we saw one youngster come in for her pre-chemo white cell count and with her brother and she had you know this young six-year-old had no hair because of the chemotherapy and they found that the white cell count was 0 0.6 and he grabbed hold of his little sister and kissed her on the top of her head saying that's brilliant we can get her the chemotherapy today and they were all smiling about it i mean 
wow, that's powerful. That is powerful. And so they are part of the journey and we've got to talk to them and help them understand what is going to be happening with their samples. Costs. Well, that's something that I had no idea about until really probably last year, if I'm honest. Um, the costs of healthcare. Yes, with NHS free of point of care and that, all of that. Our shared care now in the West Sussex is now with Southampton. So our families have to go to Southampton. So that's either a car or a train. Well, we all know the cost of fuel has gone up. So they go across there and they pay for, how do they get there? Well, mum or dad or both have got to take time off work. So potentially that's a loss of income as well for that shared care. And the fuel prices go up and up and up. And as children go through this healthcare journey, what happens to the siblings? Where do they go? Are they at school? Do they then need to have preschool care, post-school care, whilst parents are away with the other child in the shared care site? It all costs. And then there's a lack of income coming in, which then adds an additional stress onto the families who are going through pretty horrendous healthcare journey anyway. And then we have our appointments for our patients that are coming into the hospital. Now, bear in mind, we're just in the lab, aren't we? Well, why are we just in the lab? No, we're not. We're part of that journey. We're part of working together with a team. And so if they're going in to see a paediatrician or an oncologist, then they involve us. We work together around getting the sample taken at the appropriate time so we can get the result back to them as soon as possible so they can see the results with the clinician and plan the treatment together. Plan that what transfusion support may be required. What tests might be required for future testing for full blood counts, etc., before chemotherapy or the planned journey. We work together and maybe it's not just a simple issue of, I say simple wrongly, I apologise, of a leukaemia. Maybe there are other healthcare issues going on with the patients. And, and through Harvey's GAN, we've met lots of Down syndrome patients that have got complex healthcare needs. We've got special needs patients with autism. What do they need? Well, actually, they may also need other consultants to be seen well actually i learned from a very special uh, lady um, yvonne newbold that actually she needed to be seen by a number of consultants as did her children and it took up 10 days of treatment going into the hospital on a regular basis to see all of the children and her with various consultants well that is that right you know can't we work together plan and maybe have consultants come to their clinic or come to somebody else's clinic now we've got it links and etc we can see results on multidisciplinary teams and therefore share computer screens with the patients talk to the patients and but have several different consultants working together at the same clinic at the same time and maybe they only got to come in for one day and they get all of their healthcare needs done together so we've got a big part to play in getting outside of our laboratory and being part of the bigger picture of healthcare, along with the rest of healthcare. It's not just about doctors, nurses, porters, a &E physicians. Laboratories are in there too, and we need to be seen, and we, we need to be working together with other people. And that's something that Harvey's Gang really does help you get seen outside of the laboratory and then all of a sudden you're actually working together as part of these multidisciplinary teams. And we look after them then. We're able to put them in touch with various charities and other organisations might be helped with the travel, with the fuel costs, arranging shared care and where they could possibly stay if they need to. So that's quite important that we become out of our laboratory safe environment. So, Harvey's Gang Lab Tours is what came out of it. And we keep learning day by day. And where is that now? 
what is Harvey's Gang Laboratory Tours? Well, it's us inviting a young patient and their family down to the laboratory and showing them around our laboratory space, helping educate them about what their blood tests are, what machines are used, how they work, seeing the results that go onto computers, seeing the results when we have a blood slide and we can look down, look down microscopes and see their red cells, white cells and platelets. And so they can help understand what happens to their samples. And this has actually overcome a huge number of patients with needle phobia. The first time I came across needle phobia, a mum and a father had to hold the young child down so they had a sample taken. I mean, that's a barrier you never want to cross. You know, parents are there, they're a safety net for the children. You don't want them to have to hold down a youngster's arm once they have a sample taken. And the quality of that then is much poorer, higher stress levels, etc., and poor venous section. Whereas, you know, we're able now to see they come in their laboratory coat, roll up the sleeve and chop, chop to the full of bottom is one to one and say, wonder what it will show this time. Do I need more treatment? Do I need thyroxine? Don't I? And therefore, they can understand a lot more about their healthcare journey and feel part they're being listened to and looked after globally as opposed to just by individuals. So what has happened to Harvey's gang? Well, we started in 2014 and we're now nine years on, which is remarkable. And we've gone now to 150 sites based originally at Worthing and then slowly expanded. And we're now in 150 sites, which is amazing. However, I'm retired. Um, and I've got had limited time and I was the chair of the trustees and the chairman. Um, but I was also the person for logistics of getting all the kits out to the various sites. And that was taking me, well, I say forever, it would take me a, a week, 10 days. So that wasn't very good, not professional. And as I get older and more unable to do these things, we talked as trustees about what we could do to make sure that we had the long term plan for Harvey's gang. And the IBMS were big followers and big fans of Harvey's gang. And we talked to them and they agreed through the council to take on Harvey's gang for us. And now we've moved Harvey's gang across to the IBMS. They've taken on a company. Amazing. Taken on a company to send out the logistics. So now you get a request for a set of lab coats or particular lab coats and goodie bags to go to a particular site that gets sent in by email gets forwarded onto the company and the following day that pack is being sent out and so 24 hours after that so within 48 72 hours that site will get exactly what they asked for that's more than i could ever manage so that's brilliant but the ibms are a busy professional organization as we all know They've started a Harvey's gang team at the IBMS. They've employed somebody to look after Harvey's gang, to promote it, to help build it. And so it's not just an arm. And they've got some of their own ideas of how they can involve young patients and, and young people in healthcare. And so they've got their own ideas of how Harvey's gang continues, but also how Harvey's gang fits into their bigger picture of attracting young people into biomedical science in the future. The contact for Harvey's Gang now is Harvey's Gang at, at ibms.org. And there you will get all of your lab coats and they go from the size 26 inch, which is suitable for a four year old child, all the way up to what was my size coat, size 52, the fat person's coat, as I called it. Um, and it has coats for everybody. They also have Harvey's Gang goodie bags that they can send out. And they also help, as do I, help set up new sites. So whenever a new site wants to, to start Harvey's Gang, we're there, there to help with sharing forms, with sharing ideas, and to help talk people through about who to contact within the trust. So your paediatric teams, your oncology teams, etc. 
as well as your communications teams, your porters, a vital part of all laboratory work is our portering team. And we believe in doing something once and sharing the information and having a communication form which allows us and allows the trust to share that story of that young person locally, nationally and internationally. And so we can keep building Harvey's gang. I think it's amazing where we've gone to. You know, Harvey's gang is now in 150 sites and that's huge. But I still wanted to go everywhere. And I still see that this will slowly but surely continue growing until it becomes a normal part of children's healthcare. I still get on Facebook questions from parents to say, my child has got this problem. They need regular tests. Any chance of being, having a Harvey's Gang tour and finding out where their care is based and putting them in touch with the relevant Harvey's Gang team locally. But if there's nobody there in that local team, putting them onto now the IBMS to try and find somebody within the local laboratory that's willing to try and take it on with our support and help so they can actually start Harvey's Gang tours at the new site. And hopefully that will continue to build. And we see all the time interest. I mean, these youngsters come around, they're not bored, they're fascinated. I mean, our laboratories, as you well know, I hope, are incredible. The things that we can do with track systems, with analyzers, with microscopes, with centrifuges. I mean, a centrifuge, you know, spinning down a coagulation sample at 3,000 revs. Well, put that into a context of the car, that's 3,000 RPM that engine is doing. Now, in my Mercedes, I'm doing about 110 miles an hour if I do 3,000 revs. So you can explain it to them that actually, if that's mum and dad's car, they'll be speeding and they'll be getting a ticket. And so they can understand speed and and start understanding more about science and hopefully get them to understand more and maybe come back as a biomedical science in the future. That's the hope that we grow our own biomedical scientists. But it's about a team as well. It's not just the child and the parent or the siblings. It's about the team in the laboratory as well and the phlebotomists and the play specialists and the pharmacologists. It's all a team that are involved in children's healthcare. Once upon a time, we had a, uh, a picture uh, you may remember seeing that had an orangutan in with two young twin girls, uh, Claudia and Annabelle, and they were five at the time, identical twins, identical twins with identical neuroblastoma. And you think life is not fair. This is a recent photograph of those two twins. They are now 13 years old and doing incredibly well. Incredibly well. This is a poem that was uh, put together recently by a biomedical scientist about Harvey's gang. And I just would like to keep it there for a couple of minutes, just so you can have a quick read through, just to give you an idea of what people think about what we do in our laboratories. And it gives us the opportunity of sharing what we do on a daily basis. You know, you might be dealing with a thousand, five thousand samples a day. You haven't got the luxury of seeing patients' names. You just look at the laboratory number and the set of laboratory numbers go squirted out the other end and gets validated and away they go. You haven't got the luxury to say, OK, this is so and so's test. Let's make sure we get that sorted out quickly. Yes, we've got the. nearer the front of the queue. It comes through the validation queue a little bit quicker. The results go back a little bit faster. Or maybe if there's a difference, you get that phone call to that pediatrician or that oncologist a little bit quicker. So you can talk about the results that you've come up with on their sample this time. We also see less rejected samples from our pediatric patients. You know, how many times have, over the years have we complained bitterly about blood being on the outside of a tube? You know, why the hell should I process that sample? Look at the state of it. We've actually got no idea, uh, no idea about the journey. 
that patient to get that sample has been through. I mean, it, you know, if they're being held down by dad and mum to get a sample taken and all we can do is complain about the state of the sample and want to throw it away, that would be awful. Absolutely diabolical healthcare. And we can do better. We know we can. We are bloody good at what we do. It's now time to start shouting about what we do. We are very, very good in our pathology laboratories and our transfusion labs for keeping patients, you know, listening to the last lecture. That's amazing to get to go the lengths they went through to find that issue. Well, we do that regularly. That's who we are. We're detectives scientifically and we get to the end of it. And we've got these pa patients, these young patients with minds that want to know about it. I mean, Francesca, when she was eight and we had launched Harvey's Gang with her, her question at eight years old was, Malcolm, do you ever think we'll grow solid organs from stem cells? I mean, that's just remarkable. An eight year old coming up with that idea of a question. And the answer to that is yes. You know, but once they've gone away from our laboratory, they'll go away and they'll have a contact in the laboratory to be able to answer any of their questions in the future. So to finish, Harvey's gang is well, doing very well. We've now come under the umbrella of the IBMS and there is a blog on the IBMS now, which is up to date. Which is a fantastic read. There is also the Harvey's gang Facebook and Twitter accounts and, uh, and Instagram. And we are there and we're there for you and everybody else to develop Harvey's gang to develop your laboratories to promote you and the work that you do in your laboratories. Thank you very much.